Tucked away on the far eastern edge of Europe, an extraordinary conflict is playing out. These men are the raw recruits in a showdown between Russia and the West. It's Europe's worst war since the Balkans, with almost 8,000 killed, and yet the world seems to have largely forgotten about it. The conflict is drawing a motley crew of foreign adventurers. Hey, we're fighting a war here. We'll take all the help we can get from wherever we can get it. The rebels are backed by Moscow, and there's no prize for guessing how they feel about this man, Ukraine's pro-Western president, Petro Poroshenko. <laughs> This part of Ukraine is where flight MH17 was shot down last year, killing 298 people, including 38 from Australia. There's a shaky ceasefire in place. But until recently, the outskirts of the regional capital, Donetsk, have looked like this. No one is sure what all this is for. People here are living in limbo. We begin our journey to Donetsk on a humanitarian aid convoy from government-held territory. <laughs> The lead driver, Alexei, has family in the east and knows life there is getting tough. Normally, the journey would take a little under four hours, but with a series of checkpoints and dilapidated roads, it takes us 16 hours to reach Donetsk. The next morning, in the basement of Donetsk's main soccer stadium, the locals are busy repacking the aid and carting it out to their neighbours. This shipment is vital. The Ukrainian government has choked off normal shipments of food and medicine and red tape imposed by the rebels has prevented UN aid from getting in. As a result, the price of everything here has soared. Flour is up by 50% and meat has doubled. This really is extraordinary when you remember that we're in the middle of a modern Eastern European city in the 21st century and people are still so hard hit that they need food aid. The organisers say around 500 people are involved in getting this stuff out and onto the trucks and out to the people in need. Not one of them is being paid. And they show up pretty much every day of the week to do this. And when you start talking to them, you find out nearly every one of them has been touched quite dramatically by the conflict. Volunteer Anastasia lost her stepdaughter earlier this year when a Ukrainian government rocket attack destroyed their home. Ей было 17 лет. Она вышла во двор, и ее посекло градом. Ничего нет, понимаете? Нет дома, нет... Что у нас осталось? Нет фотографии родительской. Ничего не осталось. У нас осталось в сердце одна боль. Одна боль. Такое простить просто невозможно. Лично я, как женщина, как мать, я бы не простила. Donetsk is a pretty city in its own sort of way. It was once home to over a million people, but with two-thirds of them having fled, it's become an eerie place. The 
trouble began last year after Ukraine's pro-Russian president fled the capital, Kiev, in the face of a wave of protests. In response, Russia invaded Ukraine's Crimean Peninsula and annexed it. Then pro-Russian separatists here in the east took over Ukrainian government buildings and sent armed munitions onto the streets. They declared it the Donetsk People's Republic, an entity still recognised by no one, or even its sponsor in the Kremlin. A year on, this is what's now left of the city's airport terminal, built for the European Football Championships in 2012 at a cost of more than $900 million. The centre of town is quiet now, but on the outskirts, no one knows when the next bomb will fall. In the week where, in Donetsk, the city experiences its worst shelling in a year. When the bombs fall, the residents start filming. Posting their own unverified footage of the attacks online. And we set out to investigate the impact. Every night, somewhere on the outskirts, a little town is being hit, sometimes by artillery, sometimes by rocket attacks like this one. In this case, a man sitting just in his front room watching TV next door has been killed. The residents here blame this attack on Ukrainian government forces. The violence has reopened old wounds dating back to World War II when the Nazis occupied Ukraine. Many Ukrainians were accused of being collaborators. Olga Kosse's family and friends are amongst them. Now on her own, this young journalism graduate has taken the brave decision to stay behind to help those in need. I have a chance to help people. It can change something. We can help many people, but for one person, for one family, for one street, we have to do something by, by ourselves. Lydia Tupakava found refuge in this hostel after a rocket destroyed her home in January and her grandson Igor was terribly wounded by the shrapnel. Видите, вот такого, как он был весь разодранный, весь крови, когда врачи не давали даже 10% от того, что он выживет. И сказали мне, иди бабушка в церковь и молитесь. Слава, слава Богу, что он выжил. Слава Богу, что мы живем. Слава Богу, что люди есть, которые не бросают таких, как мы, и помогают нам. 
You see a lot of people like this? Yeah, it's a building which uh, at every apartment uh, the family was the same story. Before the war started, Igor was passionately interested in swimming and Taekwondo. But Olga says since he was wounded, the 12-year-old has become withdrawn. At the little village of Nikisha, an hour and a half drive east and on the edge of the MH17 crash zone, the quandary facing these people is painfully clear. Many of the buildings have been destroyed and the villagers are badly in need of help. Nikishina has, has, will, will disappear, I think, because a lot of buildings destroyed. So that's why if we don't do anything now, we can lose this village and lose these people. Since the Ukrainian government forces were pushed out, officials from the self-appointed rebel administration are rarely seen. Sometimes I feel alone uh, about this and maybe sad, but I have a lot of work, so that's why I say, oh, it's okay, I have to do something and it will be better. Building Nikishina is an enormous task, and for now, Olga is just trying to help the community survive. For the local nurse, Svetlana Marchenko, Olga brings essential supplies. Svetlana is another ordinary woman who's made some extraordinary choices. When nearly everyone else fled, she stayed behind to tend to the sick and the old. She's not been paid her government salary in almost a year. My profession is to help people. It's not allowed to stop. People are very psychologically Киряются. Если человек в панике, то он может натворить такого, что потом сам будет не рад. Просто стараешься успокаивать людей и выполнять свой долг. Так, дедушка, на ложку тебе вот эту. Так, дедушка, 100 грамм. Svetlana is caring for her 81-year-old father, Nikolai, a former Soviet Air Force pilot. During the worst of the fighting, Svetlana and her father survived by hiding in their cellar. Десять воронок у меня в огороде было. У соседки вообще ураган это разорвался. Как мы остались живы, мы даже не знаем, потому что было такое, что ощущение, что нас подняло и опустило. Даже здесь в погребе. This was the pride of Nikishina, the local community centre which was built just two years ago. A tank round blasted through its auditorium. The roof is littered with empty shells from enormous bullets and anti-tank weapons. This region was a battleground for almost a year because first the government pushed the rebels back towards the Russian border and then around the time that MH17 was shot down just in the valley across the way the rebels made their own counter-attack. That's why this village has taken such a beating. Just a few kilometres from Nikishina at the crash site of MH17 there's now a poignant reminder of Australia's link to this war. 
a humble memorial reads simply to the 298 innocent victims of a civil war. Очень большая трагедия. Наши вот ребята, шахтеры, которые работали на шахтах, их как привлекали к тому, чтобы находить обломки тела людей. Они ходили и взрослые мужчины падали в обморок от того, что от увиденного от этого всего. Мы тогда даже не думали, что у нас не Кишина, нас коснется и у нас будет война. Мы вообще об этом даже не думали. Но это перевернуло всю жизнь мою, получается. Совсем по-другому стало смотреть на жизнь, больше ценить жизнь. The locals might be struggling, but for one group of outsiders, the war is an opportunity to fight for their beliefs or simply have an adventure. Perhaps the most extraordinary is Russell Bonner Bentley, a native Texan with a colourful past, now fighting for the pro-Russian cause. I am a patriotic American. I love America. I love the American people. I am a serious enemy of the fascist government of the United States. I am their enemy and they are mine. You may be high. You may be low. You may be rich, child. You may be poor. Tex, as he's known here, says he spent the first five months of this year fighting on the front line. But now he's taken to the airwaves to wage the information war instead. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Radio Free Donbass. We've got the Donai News Service team in here again. We're going to tell you the truth about what's happening in Donetsk, Donbass and around the world. Texas show from Donetsk is broadcast in English throughout the region and online. We are here to prevent World War III from happening, brother, and that's what we're going to do. You can come here as a journalist. You can come here to just be a private citizen and see for yourself. You can come here and do humanitarian work, or you can come here and be a soldier. Tex uses his show to counter what he says are Western media distortions about the war. Uh, there was a major, major... Ukrainian army artillery attack on the center of Donetsk last night. People were killed, about 30 houses were destroyed. Um, but we're still here and we're not scared. This is a worldwide war and it is being fought uh, perhaps even more so in the hearts and minds of people around the world as it is at the front with, uh, with tanks and cannons and uh, Kalashnikovs. And the truth is on our side. Uh -huh. Tex is and, an interesting uh, character, I mean, to say the least. These people defeated fascists 70 years ago, and we're going to do it again. Tex tells me the 9-11 terrorist attack on the US was the work of the US government. And he reveals he was jailed for five years for smuggling more than 100 kilograms of marijuana across the Mexican border. But here in Donetsk, Tex has found new purpose and meaning. We're defending Donbass, we're defending Russia. It's the, the reason that they're trying to make Ukraine a failed state, another Libya or Iraq, is so there can be chaos on the Russian border. Uh, stop, 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 stop. Not good, not good, because he moved and you were not supporting him. You always, so, yeah, you always move behind the back of your comrade. Yeah, okay. With so many foreigners arriving to help them fight. Just the automat. The rebels are forming what's been dubbed uh, stop, stop, the Novo Russian stop, stop, Foreign stop, Legion. Ah, uh, stop, stop, stop. You don't do it the proper way. Ah, uh, don't you remember? It is inspiring and invigorating the people that are coming here. I mean, the best people in the world are coming here now. I mean, the bravest, the ones who understand that this is a war for the future of humanity. Tex says he even has a couple of Australian mates on Facebook who he hopes will come to join the fray. They're the kind of guys that might just one day get fed up with seeing all this uh, injustice and show up here. And we'd be glad to see them here. Uh, Clint and Carl, come on over, bro. We got a place for you. Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. 
Russia and its supporters have steadfastly denied Russian troops have played any formal role here. But it is an increasingly difficult line to sustain. I've seen many volunteers from Russia, um, you know, that guys that perhaps are veterans or, you know, have been in the Russian army, but they're not in the Russian army now. But they can't have kept up this war effort for so long without resupply from Russia. I mean, that's serious military equipment ammunition coming in from Russia. Well, um, whoever's sending us bullets, thank you. How many, how many millions and billions has uh, Obama and the EU sent to the Nazis in Kiev? You know, it's, hey, we're fighting a war here. We'll take all the help we can get from wherever we can get it. But back in Nikishina, help is in short supply. In the centre of the village, Yevdokia Kirienko sits in the only room of her house that remains intact. The rest was blown to smithereens. <laughs> Like so many others, Yevdokia's family are living as refugees in Western Ukraine. Barely able to walk, she's been left here to fend for herself. Ну, то есть вы сейчас передвигаетесь только на вот этом, да, на... Угу. То есть я, наверное, на следующей неделе или через неделю приеду, и тогда уже угу. привезу у вас вот списочек. Я дома, я не on the edge of Nikishina, this is what's left of a school that once housed hundreds of students. It's really sad because I feel that Nikishina is like a, a wounded uh, child. A wounded child. A wounded child and uh, it needs help. This is poet Alexander Block, Russian mm -hmm. poet. Mm -hmm. Olga's desperate to Easy. score her own Why small sort of victory here. Mm -hmm. She wants to save all the books so she can rebuild a library. I want to do something for, for, for this village. I want to do something for the kids because their lives are ruined. I understand what it means when you live in a beautiful place and you saw only destroyed buildings, only stones at the place where you was born. Both sides are to blame for this devastation and Olga makes a final plea. I want to say that, hey, hey, stop. We know that you can destroy uh, everything. We, 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 we saw it. It's okay, you can destroy, but can you rebuild? Russia's done just enough to covertly stir up trouble here and destabilize Ukraine. It's a warning to others in the region of what could happen to them. No one knows if the end game will be staying part of Ukraine, full independence, or being swallowed by Russia. Those left trying to survive in this twilight zone have no idea what might come next. Oh!